guys, camera with Car Audio now. Uh, today we're going to be doing a quick walkthrough of Alpine's ILX uh, W650. It's a seven inch um, audio video receiver. It's a, it's a digital media receiver, so it doesn't have any CDs. Uh, so we're going to walk through some of the features, give you a good understanding of what it's capable of doing, um, and, and just in general, a good look of, of uh, its functionality before you pull the trigger and buy one. Um, so let's start out here. Uh, right now, what you see in, in front of you is the, the home screen. So when you fire up the, uh, the unit for the first time, um, or well, just any time, uh, it'll default to the main menu, right? And um, let's go back here. Uh, this is the main menu of the unit itself. Uh, as you can see here, from top uh, left to right here, you've got radio, that's obviously always enabled. You'll see these two here are grayed out right now. That's because I don't have anything in the USB. Um, and therefore I don't have any, uh, uh, anything for, for the iPod. Um, I think th these two are looking for specifically a USB drive and an iPod. Um, I do have my phone connected, which is why you see Apple CarPlay though. Um, the USB is kind of where you would, you would go to upgrade the firmware, um, things of that nature. Um, so here we're in the radio. I don't have the actual antenna hooked up. This is in a, a demo box of mine. Uh, but here you can see some of the, the, the basic features of, of the radio, right? You have FM 1, 2, 3. Those are just for building out your FM radio stations. You have three different uh, separate uh, FM, you know, uh, memories to fill out essentially six channels for a total of 18 channels right so you'll just basically click and hold on one of these and it'll it'll assign a channel pretty basic you have scan uh memory and then uh you have you know two just two two versions of scan one is one is basically uh your basic scan from channel to channel and the one's a more in-depth um scanner and then you can also change out your or just kind of scroll through your your different uh channels piece by piece very very basic um you know covers everything that you need to uh nothing too special about the radio uh am fm you know uh pretty much uh you know the basics from that standpoint uh, so let's navigate back to the menu um so let's go in to uh the setup here i'm gonna actually uh skip forward here and go into the setup and start walking through some of the the features this way um let's start with the 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 bulk you know the bulk of the features of this unit which are in the sound se section here um this this unit has two versions of uh sound configurations you can see this is sort of the basic view you have your fade fader and balancer uh bass and treble eq and subwoofer um, that's good for the basic user. Uh, it'll get you, you know, 75, 80% of what uh, uh, there in, in terms of what you're trying to do. You can set, you know, where you are in the car and it'll adjust sort of the delay uh, from the, you know, from the speakers and it'll adjust the, how much power is, is, uh, is going into each of the speakers based on, you know, kind of where you set the, the center point uh, of, of your balance and fader, right? You can see, um, now we are technically here and you'll want to set that, you know, closer to where, well, c central, but you know, it really just depends on your vehicle, where, where the, the speakers are in the front, where they're el if they're elevated or if they're in the kick panels, right? That's kind of what, uh, this is helpful for, uh, in order to, to optimize where the sound comes from, where, or where it, where it sounds like it's coming from. I know that sounds interesting, but that's kind of what these are for. Uh, you click the center and it goes back. Bass and treble, you see a th basically a three band equalizer is what this is. You have bass, middle, and treble. So you can adjust up and down um, or just set it to flat, right? And it'll go back to, um, you know, a standard flat settings. Equalizer, uh, you have four, uh, five different pre-configured uh, equalizers. And you can see that uh, flat, just basically from Alpine, they give you a couple of options to set up your equalizer based on what you listen to. Uh, or you can go into the custom, um, and I'll, I'll get get into that in a moment. Uh, subwoofer, if you have a subwoofer hooked up um, via the RCAs in the back, you can turn it on, off, and then you can control the level via um, this this uh, this control panel here. So you can set it higher or lower. Um, if you do want to, um, you know, increase your subwoofer on the fly. 
um, you would need a separate knob, <clears throat> you know, in order to do that. Um, otherwise, you have to come in here and, and kind of select the gains in, in, in this one. But if you have a mono a mono block amplifier, odds are um, that amplifier came with a you know a typical a knob that that your installer or you might install yourself uh, to to adjust the gain and you mount that under your dash or not under your dash, but you know somewhere on your dash that's accessible. But uh, if you need to, you can you can come in and adjust it here. Phase uh, basically depending on how your your subwoofer is installed, if it's installed upside down, like a down fire or just a standard, uh, gives you those options. So let's go into the advanced here. This is where um, your intermediate to expert uh, uh, installer is going to come in here and and uh, and mess around with. So this is this is where I'd come in and tinker with, right? So you have on the very left hand side, you have your uh, your crossovers, um, and basically. What this does is it sets the thresholds of frequencies that will be output in the RCA channel. So you have your front, rear, and subwoofer channels. So you can you can go in and select the channel here, um, and then you can adjust. So for example, if if I had a six and a half inch speaker in the front on this uh, channel, um, what I would try to do is is align the frequency the basically the low frequency i would set a a, a low f a floor um threshold or a, fl a floor uh frequency for how low the frequencies can go on this particular channel because the six and a half inch speaker is not going to cover the low frequencies like a subwoofer so you basically do you know let's let's just give an example of uh maybe you know 50 and higher i don't know uh whatever the speaker you can find those frequency ranges on the specs of your speakers but you're going to want to try to align those with the specs um, at the very least, and at the at, at the most, you're gonna you're gonna tune it to to what you like, and uh, based on the power and and all the other you know factors that go into tuning. But this is actually a um, uh, a pretty powerful feature. Uh, it's very in depth, actually. You know uh, what you can see. You can see you can set the low and the high, or you can set it as a high pass, low pass, or just a full. You can really uh, kind of uh, adjust the ranges here, um, very in depth for for each channel. Moving on to the equalizer. So now this expands that three band uh, into what is two, four, six, eight, nine band uh, equalizer. So you can adjust each of these different frequency bands or ranges um, very uh, intricately. Uh, it's it's you, you can you can do it with a lot of control. So it's a it's a much broader, more uh, more in depth way of of controlling your EQ versus the you know preset options i just showed you again these are probably more for for something that your installer is going to tinker with unless you're pretty confident and and capable of of tuning your stereo like with with something like this um tcr so what this is this is basically to adjust for the distance that your speaker is so if you if you're sitting in the front seat this rear this rear speaker is going to have a delay by the time it gets to you. So what this does is helps you adjust for the delays depending on where you're sitting or where you want the sound to to to, to be uh, and to meet the focal point of your sound, it will help you adjust the delays to get there. And you can set different delays or sorry, presets for for this and you can adjust every single speaker so that all of them will basically uh you know, depending on the delays, it'll all center at one point in your car uh, at the same exact time that's what that does so defeat basically will turn your all of your your settings on or off um uh so if you have any audio settings you can basically just remove them all and that's that's uh the the uh the, the basis of this one is just basically an override um let's see here so back to this, the, the simple versions, you go back to the simple. Let's go back to the menu. Let's go into volume. We're, now we're back to the setup. We're back to the setup menu. So let's go to volume. You In the volume, you can adjust, you know, your your different types of volume. You have, in, in, in particular, I think it, this is this is more for like inputs. Uh, things like right now we're hooked up to Bluetooth. So your ringer volume, if somebody calls you, how loud you want that to be. Caller volume, if, you know, how loud somebody is talking when you're on the phone and mic volume, that's like the pickup. So you can you can crank up the gain so that people can hear you better. Uh, let's go into other. 
uh, key sound feedback. This is just your, your, um, uh, the, the button noise, right? So if you click on a key or button, um, you can either have it off second or on. It just changes when and if you hear a sound, for example, if I click on uh, phone, right? So right now it's it's turned off or you can't hear it because I'm on Bluetooth and, or some combination thereof, but you can adjust whether it has a key tone or not when you click on buttons. Um, system, let's go into system. These are pretty basic, right? You have your clock, so you can turn your, your display on or off for, for your clock. You can adjust the clock. You can adjust the dimmer. Um, auto basically is when, <clears throat> you know, your wire harness or your car, if it has a dimmer, that'll tell the unit when to dim when your headlights are on. That's when you select auto. Otherwise you do on and off or you just leave it. And then you can select the dimmer level, how bright it is. Um, and then along with the, the key illumination down here, you can kind of adjust that based on, you know, the dimmer levels. So uh, it's more for nighttime use. And if your car does have dimmer or not, um, you know, built into the wiring language, English, you got all the, all sorts of uh, languages. And then you got, you can reset the whole unit. Um, back to the setup. Um, moving on, connectivity, very basic stuff. I think this is, in particular, this is just for CarPlay. So if you have uh, CarPlay enabled, it'll basically auto auto pick up on CarPlay when you plug your phone in and then you can you can uh, set the guidance volume, which is for the um, navigation and things like that, or just a general pickup for CarPlay. Uh, let's go into Bluetooth. Here you can see you can add multiple devices um, you know, and, and basically you can go and search for a device, you can go into the info and then you can remove it. Right now you can see my phone is connected and it's enabled for music and cell phones, but you can add multiple devices and then you can select it, whichever one you want to use at that time, you can go in to, to select it if you have multiple ones connected. Um, camera. So <clears throat> right now there, there's no camera hooked up, but these settings, since we're in the setup configure, you know, the, the, the setup area, it goes into the, the camera configurations. And it's kind of interesting because you can go and you can kind of select which you can have up to, to, uh, uh, you know, well, there's three pages of, of, of settings, but you can set the primary camera, whether it's in the front or the rear or, or whatnot, and whether you have a secondary camera. So you can have up to two cameras, right? And then if you, turn one on, or if for some reason, both of them are turned on at the same time, you, you can have a primary and secondary. In our case, we'll, we'll probably only hook up a rear one. Um, page two, you can adjust the picture quality and then the camera signal. This might, I think this is automatic. Uh, don't quote me, you'll probably have to check on that. But at the very least, depending on the camera that you type or, or you connect, you'll have to just align the signal based on the, the type of signal that the camera outputs. Rear camera guide. So this is just the guides that, you know, the guard, the guardrails when you're reversing. So you can, you can go, you can turn them on and then you can, you can adjust them. You know, you can see, let's see here, it might have to be connected in here. Oh, you select one and then you can move it out or in or, you know, up or down, depending on how your camera is mounted, where your camera is mounted so that you don't reverse into reverse into the, the, the car behind you. Uh, or if you're in a truck, you don't bury your uh, hitch into the, the license plate of, of a car if you're backing in. So um, let's see here, what else do we got? So let's go out of the setup here and um, let's go into the camera here. You can see in, if it was hooked up, you would see it here. So you can actually navigate to the camera at any time as long as the camera has power so it depends on how you wire it but you could in theory go and turn this on at any point if it always has power so and what you would do is you'd wire the camera for power const to constant power and then you'd wire there's a dedicated signal wire on the back of this unit that you'd wire to the reverse um to the reverse wire so that the camera always has power um, that way, if you click on this button, you can actually see what's behind you or in front of you at that time, um, instead of only when you're in reverse. So that's probably how we'll wire this. So let's go out of that. Okay. So I'm going to hook up my phone and then we're going to go into CarPlay cause I have, uh, an Apple device. So let's hook it up here. 
So now I have my iPhone hooked up. It's hooked up via, via USB. This isn't a wireless unit where you can have CarPlay, um, uh, you know, just via Bluetooth. So I hooked it up and now you can see on the right hand side, you'll see the Apple CarPlay. And uh, so it enables it, it automatically will, will appear every time you connect it. And once you have this connected, it, it's gonna override. You can see Bluetooth actually was removed. So now it defaults to Apple CarPlay because the signal is a lot better. It's a direct connection. It's better than Bluetooth. So uh, whenever you do that, just note, you know, your your Bluetooth is gonna, whenever you connect your phone and it's a, either an Android or an, a, an Apple uh, iPhone or something, uh, you're going to lose the Bluetooth audio is going to default to the Android auto auto Android auto or Apple CarPlay. And once you're in here, you can kind of see the general Apple CarPlay. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but you have all the applicable, um, uh, well, applications that are, that are compatible with Apple CarPlay. They, you know, people are adding more and more every day, but, um, you know, they're basically, if you're not familiar with Apple CarPlay, they're very, very light versions of all these apps is what these are because when you're driving they don't want you to be distracted so if you go in to something well on the left hand side you can see i have these hot keys here if you go into something like spotify it's a lot different than what you would look like in in your actual phone you can also go into your phone and use it while it's connected to, to carplay but you know the the light version is going to be much uh, you know, in, in, in CarPlay, it's, it's just much lighter with a lot, it's limited functionality. Um, you know, you can go through and you can set your, your songs. You do have a good amount of, of control here. You know, you have home, oops, uh, you have all your playlists, uh, you know, you can browse and so on and so forth. Uh, in your apps, you can, you know, depending on whether you use maps, th this will basically always default to your latest, this top section will default to your latest maps program that you use I've in, in in my case I used Waze and and it basically operates just as it would on your phone so uh, for those who aren't familiar and then you have your you know your your general uh, your, your home screen for for Apple CarPlay um, so if you if you guys want to read up more about Apple CarPlay what it does we have a we have a, I'll, I'll attach a link to the description or or down at the bottom here uh, for 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 those who want to read up on on Apple CarPlay a little bit more about what it does um, so let's navigate back out and see if there's anything else, uh, in particular that we should cover. I think, you know, in general, this, this head unit, um, it covers all the basics. It's got everything that you need. Right. And, and that was kind of the goal with, with this unit. We actually purchased this for, a to go into a, a an older F 250 diesel, nothing special. We wanted Apple CarPlay. Uh, we wanted Bluetooth. Uh, you know, radio and, and a lot of the basics in a, in a, in a touchscreen head unit. So uh, this unit will give us all of that. Um, and it does it, you know, it, it very elegantly. It's very easy to use. It's very responsive. It's quick. Um, I don't see any, you know, any major issues. We're, you know, we probably won't actually leverage all of the different sound uh, configurations and features that it has. We're just going to hook up some new speakers. I don't even know if we're going to put a subwoofer in there, but if you wanted to do that, this has ample kind of control over those kind of kinds of custom systems, which is, um, you know, it, it, w with a lot more control than I've seen in, in a lot of the other units. So I really like that about it. Um, uh, you know, and if you wanted to hook in something extra like Sirius XM, you can, uh, you just have to buy the, the, uh, ex you know, the external module that'll enable that all in all great unit, uh, great price for a seven inch touchscreen with, car with CarPlay and Android auto. Um, I'd recommend this unit, uh, you know, if, if you're looking for, for a, a moderately priced head unit, um, be sure to, to, to subscribe to our channel. If you like this video, uh, down at the bottom here, uh, leave us a comment. If you have any questions, thanks for watching.